Being British, there are three different concepts in my life. Enjoying a daily cup of tea, constantly just talking about the weather, and getting sunburned any time the sun breaks through the clouds. And that's not just a generalisation by the way, that's me talking from experience. Hi, my name is Tom and I'm a scuba diving professional. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about reef safe sunscreens so you can find the right one for you and also get the approval from all your fishy friends out there. Timestamps are in the description for anyone who wants to skip ahead to any specific parts. First off, let's just talk about why you can't trust the labelling of reef safe on sunscreen. And I'm going to prove this with an example. So if you go onto the Amazon website, type in reef safe sunscreen, you'll find this brand Sun Bum Sunscreen. And it's even Amazon's choice. So good start, right? You also look at it in the description, it says it's vegan, also mentions again, reef safe, and it'll even go further down if you scroll, you'll find that it says it doesn't include oxybenzone and also oxin oxate, which are two of the main chemicals which are not reef safe. So it should be good, right? Well, there's also an image which shows me the back of the packaging and I can see the ingredients there. And the second one, well, it says octocrylene and this chemical causes coral bleaching. It also reduces the fertility of corals as well, which obviously is not a good thing. And not only that, it also has homoslate on there. And homoslate also reduces the growth rates of corals and makes them more susceptible to disease, which again, you don't want to have for your reef safe sunscreen. So why is this actually labeled reef safe? Well, the simple answer to that is that reef safe is not a regulated term. It's a marketing term. There's no actual reef safe certification that a brand can have because it doesn't exist. It's just there to sound good and make you want to buy the product more so. And a lot of them will have like one or two positives, which are good, but they might still have some chemicals in there which are gonna harm marine life or corals, or both. <laughs> Fun fact, by the way, I was actually gonna use a different brand. The one I was gonna go for was Safe C, which is one of the main ones you'll find on the Amazon website. However, when I went back to get information on them this time, they have got rid of their ingredients section, which leads me onto the first red flag you can find on any brand, ones which either don't have an ingredient section or want to make it very hard to find the ingredient section. I even went onto Safe C's own website and I still couldn't find it. It just has some marketing stuff. It mentions some things that they don't have, which are obviously good. So it mentions that they don't have certain chemicals, which are bad. But without having the full ingredients, I don't know if they've changed the formula and made it now reef safe properly or if there actually are issues with it. So it's just something to keep in mind that to make sure something is actually reef safe, you're going to need to go for the ingredients fully. But which ingredients do I need to check? Well, it's kind of straightforward. They begin with the letter O, and that's oxybenzone, oxin oxate, and octocrylene. If you're curious what they do, oxobenzene causes coral bleaching and disrupts the growth of corals and their development. Oxin oxate damages the DNA of corals and causes deformities in marine life. And octocrylene also causes coral bleaching and reduces the fertility of corals and marine organisms. So if you're looking for an easy scan when looking at products, look out for those three. However, there are much more than just those three. So if you are someone who wants a more comprehensive understanding of what to look out for, I'm gonna put on screen now all the other chemicals to watch out for. So there's quite a bit. <laughs> but just to simplify it, the most common ones you're gonna find are parabens, homoslate, and avobenzone. Okay, have you written them all down? Can I move on? You took a screenshot, right? Cool, let's move on. Just some quick bonus checks you should be doing is making sure that it's water resistant, like Duh, you're going in the ocean, you are going to want it to be water resistant. <laughs> you don't want it just to wash off straight away. Also, non nano, that just makes it means that there's not going to be these tonic particles coming off, which are going to be creating microplastics in the ocean. Vegan and cruelty free, this is more of a personal one, but I think if you're trying not to harm marine life, you should try and also do the same for other animals when you're choosing a product. And the whole animal testing side of things isn't really necessary nowadays. And finally, eco friendly packaging. Again, a bit of a no brainer. You're trying to be good for the ocean. So why add more plastic pollution into the world, which is unnecessary. So moving on, let's talk about sunscreen brands I've checked for you. Yeah, I've been nice and actually found some ones for you. So you won't have to go out there and read the whole Wikipedia page of text on the back of each bottle just to figure out if they are okay or not. Because <laughs> let's face it, they're not easy words to read in the first place and there's a lot. So it's not a fun process to find brands which are good. This is just my way of helping you out here to streamline the process for you. Quick disclaimer though, I am not sponsored by any of the brands I'm about to mention. So don't worry about that side of things. And also they are fitting the definition of reef safe for the year 2024 from our current understanding of what is reef safe sunscreen. This is just because for um, time to time we do find a new chemical from scientists doing experiments and tests. And we find that something what was considered reef safe in the past is no longer reef safe. 
So if you are watching this way in the future and you're like, wait, what about this? Well, it's because this video is from 2024. Okay, we're all good now. <laughs> so with that out of the way, here are the sunscreens you should be getting in 2024. The first one I found was Badger Balm sunscreen. And yes, these are all gonna be SPF 50 or that kind of range because you should be wearing high protection sunscreen so it actually works. Just to move you a little bit there. Um, and the reason I like this one is because it has very few ingredients, only four in fact. And the product itself is 98% organic. So when it comes to like the future proofing of sunscreens, because this one doesn't really have any chemicals in there, it makes it a pretty safe bet that you know this one's gonna be okay to use and we're not gonna be like, oh, that is now not really safe. So yeah, get some thumbs up this one does. On the side of make sure it's all organic and that's gonna be fine, just go for any old Surfer Zinc. There's two I found online, that's the Surf Yogi's one and Surf Yonder. Both of those just contain natural organic ingredients. So you know it's gonna be fine to use and there's no chemicals to worry about if they are reef safe or not. However, you do have to keep in mind you will probably have a zinc face and it's a look. Some people like it, some people don't like it. It's up to you on that one. <laughs> Next to mention is Stream to Sea. Lots of my diver friends love this one. It's made by a diver for divers. So it does make sense that this one's good. I did check it over. Even though there's a lot of different chemicals listed in there, it is all good. It's a mineral based sunscreen. It's got eco packaging, it's vegan. So lots of good things in there. However, the one issue I did find is on their website, I can only find SPF 45 as the highest. Personally, I like the 50 plus kind of range, but 45 is still quite high, but just for me personally, I would rather have a higher SPF. And the final one to talk about is the Blue Lizard sunscreen. This is very similar to the Stream to See one. It's a mineral based sunscreen. It does have some chemicals, but they do not have any of the bad ones currently in there. The thing I do like is that they have SPF 50 plus. So good one on that one, guys. But also they have lots of different skin types there. So if you're someone who has sensitive skin or you have very specific dermatological, I think it's that the right, dermatological needs, this could be the one for you. They also have ones for babies and children. So if you're someone who has a family and wants to get all your sunscreen from one place, that might be a big win for you as well. And that is your sunscreen. So you can choose from any of those and you know you're in safe hands. But let's just talk about how to apply it and how to not get sunburnt because I don't want any of you guys turning into red British lobsters right now. So first of all, you need to apply the stuff 15 to 30 minutes before being exposed to sunlight. Yep, I didn't say water there. It is before going to sunlight, not going into the water. One of the ways I avoid doing this as a diving instructor is during my briefings, it's one of the first things I mentioned, are you guys wearing sunscreen? And it gives people then the chance to do it during the briefing and then while they're on the boat and before they get to the dive, they have plenty of time to actually have that stuff soak in. That's why it's 15 to 30 minutes. So it gives it time to soak in, because if you don't let it soak in, it might just wash off when you get in the water. Personally, I also would lean to go for 30 minutes of time to soak in. Don't try and give it the bare minimum of like the 15 minutes and just hope it works. It's all different. We don't know, it will vary from sunscreen to sunscreen. So give it that full amount of time if possible. Next point is that extra coverage is great. So wear some sunglasses, wear a cap when you're on the boat. And even when in the water, having extra coverage on your body is great. So wearing something like a rash guard or even a long suit wetsuit, that will help you not get burnt when you're on the surface of the water there. Next tip is obviously to remember to reapply after you've got out of the water. When you're in the water, the water's gonna wash off, but from doing physical activities like diving, snorkeling, whatever, you will sweat and that will also wash it off. But obviously, make sure you are dry before you reapply it, guys. <laughs> and also for divers, be mindful on how long your surface interval is. If you've not got very long surface intervals, you might want to just maybe give it a miss and just stay in the shade during the duration instead of reapplying because it might not have enough time to properly soak in. Next advice is to apply it even if it is cloudy. This is the time I always get caught out by the sun. Even though it's cloudy, UV rays still get through and they will get penetrate your skin and that can get you sunburnt. And the problem is with it being cloudy is you don't feel it as often either. So it does catch you out. So even on cloudy days, guys, make sure you're wearing your sunscreen. And final one, this is probably a bit of a nitpick one, which I know not everyone's gonna follow, but apply sunscreen even if you are in colder climates. This is just simply because you're outside and especially with stuff like diving when you have a lot of time in the open air and in unshaded environments, it still can affect you. But I know not everyone's gonna follow that advice, but in the long run, it will pay off to wear sunscreen even in cold places. And that is your Reef Safe sunscreen class complete, guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it at all helpful, please give it a like. It helps me out, but it'll also help other people find this video too. I've been Nark Tom, and I hope you guys stay safe in the ocean and do not end up like red lobsters, because that's not a great look. <laughs> okay, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.